Do you want the best tips and strategies to make a ton of money with every role fast in Red Dead Online? Well, if you do, this video is going to be perfect for you. I've done a bunch of role videos in the past, ranking up roles from worst to best, talking about money grinding, gold grinding, ranking up, leveling up, etc. But today we're going to take all of this a step further. We're going to be discussing the ultimate tips and tricks I have so that you can make money fast and easy with each role in Red Dead Online. Even if you know the general idea of how to use a role to your advantage, I bet there's going to be some interesting tips and tricks within this video that you didn't know about before, and those are going to help you out even more. I get asked during my live streams all the time how I make the money I make, what activities I do, what's my favorite role, what role do I play as most, etc. And truth be told, the answers to those questions have changed over time for me as I learn the really intricate ins and outs of this game, as I learn how to absolutely maximize my playtime get the most golden money possible, etc. And so I would like to share all of this information here with you today. We have five roles and a lot of tips to break down. So let's get started. If you enjoy this video at any point, or if you just find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. And if you want to stay up to date with everything Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online, then please consider hitting that subscribe button with your bell notifications turned on. The first role we're going to be jumping into is the Trader role, which released during the Frontier Pursuits update in September of 2019, and it's a very effective role at making money if you really focus in and you try and stock up your camp with materials so that crypts can later turn them into goods for you to sell. When it comes to those sell missions, 100 good large delivery wagons sell for $500 when you sell locally and $625 when you sell long distance. Of course, long distance is gonna have more risk associated with it and that's why the reward is greater. Whichever sell distance you choose, that's up to you. I've rotated between doing the long distance and the local ones and honestly, the long distance is gonna make you a lot more money over time despite the deliveries taking a lot longer in that immediate moment. But which delivery you're gonna be choosing to do is only one part of the equation. First, you gotta worry about hunting animals, getting materials at your camp, and then turning those materials into goods that you can sell. When it comes to hunting animals in the free roam, I used to have a bunch of tips and tricks for you like finding animals at Little Creek, Heartland Overflow, focusing in on panthers, cougars, and deer, mostly with the deer and cougars that you can farm with the tall trees spawning method where you can get lots of three stars of those animals. That method doesn't really work anymore. It, it, I mean, it works, but it's not necessarily viable and you can be a lot more efficient doing the following. This is where the naturalist comes into play. I don't wanna act like I'm moving on to the naturalist role already, but the funny reality here is the best way to make money with the trader role is to use the naturalist role and hunt those legendary animals. Like I said, I will have a dedicated section just for the naturalist in this video, but it's probably a good idea that I give the trader role related hunting tips in this section. So linked in the description below is a chart of all legendary animals that you can find in Red Dead Online and the breakdown of how much money you can make by selling them to Gus, their pelt value in materials and their carcass value in materials and more like the sample values, etc. When it comes to this chart, we're going to focus on those trader materials section. From here, just take the best animals off this chart and focus on those missions when you see them at Harriet's. Of course, if none of those are available, you have to take what you can get, but I highly recommend you focus in on animals that don't take a very long time to track down so that you can kill and skin them really fast instead of just focusing on animals with the highest pelt material value. For example, the banded gator yields 40.63 materials. The Iwakta panther yields 43.13 materials. The Akahi boar yields 41.25. The milk coyote is worth 38.13, the enami elk is worth 41.16, and the peta bison is worth 58.75 materials, and then the rutile horn ram yields 56.25. There's other really good animal sighting missions to try out, like the legendary golden spirit bear, which is going to yield a staggering 62.50 materials, but the issue with this particular animal is that there's variants of it that can take upwards of 10-15 minutes or even longer while you're just running around in circles searching for animal clues, and honestly, you're just going to be better off doing the other missions because they take at most a couple minutes like the banded gator one if it wasn't for loading times the mission itself would only take 25 seconds to complete in some situations so definitely important that you hunt legendary animals for the trader role i usually get one of those done after every legendary bounty i do in this game after every hour or so now let's move on to the moonshiner role let's talk about this role itself it released with the moonshiners update in december of 2019 it's personally one of my favorites in terms of gameplay. This role is all about selling moonshine and the two most important things you need to make sure you have are a good moonshine recipe to produce as well as a good location for your moonshine shack. My favorite spot to set up my moonshine shack is in the bayou with my second being tall trees. 
The Heartlands as well and the Grizzlies are okay, and then the new Austin location is just absolutely terrible, as long as we're talking about day-to-day -day consistent use of the shack. The reasons I think the Bayou location is the best because you have close delivery locations to the farms above San Denis, the San Denis Saloon, the San Denis Fence, and also the shack down by Shady Bell, which is the furthest delivery location for this specific shack location. The trails are all smooth for your deliveries, so you're not gonna have a bumpy wagon ride and lose your moonshine, the bottles aren't gonna break, etc. You're also in close proximity to the Legra fast travel post and the San Denis fast travel post when you finish your cell missions. And an additional bonus to this shack location is lots of collectibles spawn around the shack. Depending on the day, you get tarot cards that spawn on the barrels outside, wildflowers spawn by the river, and you also get random dig sites that pop up. Also, a little secret tip is if you kill yourself inside of the Moonshine Shack, you will respawn right at the Legra fast travel post. If you have the Wilderness fast travel ability, this isn't too helpful of a tip. This used to be a big deal, but honestly, it's something I still want to mention. Now, the second thing I want you to keep in mind is the type of Moonshine you're making. The best Moonshine recipe is going to be Berry Cobbler. When it comes to making Moonshine, most players make the mistake of producing the highest paying Moonshine flavors and they leave it at that. However, I propose an alternative for those who want even greater profits. For the best recipe and highest rate of return over time, I highly recommend you make Berry Cobbler Moonshine for several reasons. Firstly, the buyer is virtually always available. Although it is a two-star moonshine, and you're probably going to scoff at that thinking you can make up to $247 per sale with three-star special recipes, there's a few problems you're going to have with those three-star moonshines. First, those recipes require collectibles, which means you won't be necessarily using them for collection sets. Additionally, using them in moonshine only yields a few extra dollars compared to selling them in the set, so the profit margins aren't even significantly greater. But the major problem here is that all recipes, except for berry cobbler, don't have basically a guaranteed buyer when your moonshine is ready. Berry Cobbler, on the other hand, is the exception. There's only been two times in the past three years since this recipe's been around and has been the meta. It used to be Appleberry Crumb, Rockstar nerfed that one, but Berry Cobbler is basically the exact same. It's just a different recipe name for the same reasons. In the past three years since Berry Cobbler has been the meta moonshine recipe to make, there's only been two times that I've been doing deliveries or tried to do deliveries and the buyer for that moonshine hasn't been available. All the others, you're constantly gonna run into that problem where maybe like four out of five moonshine runs you try and do when you first go to the moonshine shack to deliver, the guy's not around. So you gotta wait more time in order to be able to deliver. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. You're basically at that point able to make $226 with Berry Cobbler every single hour in this game. And the reason for that is the following. So just a quick side note here. If you're wondering why your Berry Cobbler recipe isn't selling for the $226, it's because you haven't purchased the moonshine condenser and the polished copper still upgrades, which maximize profits. Additionally, to produce your 20 bottles of moonshine in 48 minutes, like I'm talking about, instead of 60 minutes in total, you need to be at least moonshine roll rank 15. All in all, 48 minutes to produce the moonshine, and then you have the spare 12 minutes to do basically the delivery yourself, go back to the moonshine shack and start making more. You're able to make about $226 every single hour in game. Now let's move on to the bounty hunter roll. This roll specifically is the only roll in the game that actually pays you in both money and gold for completing missions. Other roles have the daily challenges which you can complete to earn gold, but doing the activities like delivering moonshine or selling your trader goods or collecting items, for example, don't pay you in gold for the deliveries. The bounty hunter is the only role in the game that pays you both in gold and money. Now, although it may sound like we're gonna be shifting gears to earning gold, you're still gonna earn lots of money by implementing these tips and tricks and these methods into your gameplay, so don't worry. If you focus solely on maximizing money with the bounty hunter, then of course, legendary bounties are gonna be the way to go, but just keep in mind that you're gonna be forfeiting your moonshine and your trader productions because those are halted when you're not in a free roam lobby. Of course, I always have to mention this in all of my videos, but if you want a actual gold grinding guide on how to make gold fast and easy in Red Dead Online, then definitely check out on my channel. I have that guide for you. I just made one earlier this year, updating with some new tips and tricks. The last time I made this specific video was in May of 2020. So since then, we had the Naturalist role release as well as the prestigious Bounty Hunter expansion. So I definitely need to update some of my tips and tricks for the Bounty Hunter here. Before, I used to suggest that the free roam bounties were really good if you were keen on keeping up with all your other roles, like Trader and Moonshiner, for example. But nowadays, you're probably better off splitting your time between 
those legendaries as always, as well as the infamous bounty. So we're gonna discuss both, but the following advice I have here applies to all types of bounties. When it comes to earning gold bars in Red Dead Online, it's crucial to understand that the gold payout is solely determined by the time spent on a mission, regardless of the mission type. The mission timer starts as soon as you initiate a mission and hear that bell ring, and that's completely unrelated to the countdown timer that's on your screen, which only indicates the time that you have left to complete the mission until you fail. Of course, it's essential that you pay attention to that timer to avoid running out of time and failing the mission, as failing means you won't receive any gold. Unfortunately though, some players still hold the misconception that waiting until the last 30 seconds is the key to maximizing gold earnings. That's entirely inaccurate advice, so do not listen to it, please. Additionally, Optimizing your gold earnings in Red Dead Online involves the understanding of timing on missions. Gold is awarded in increments for every three minutes spent on a mission, with the most efficient time frame being 12 minutes. Beyond that, the interval between gold payouts increases and the amount awarded per interval decreases here, making longer missions less efficient. For example, you can earn 32 gold nuggets by spending 12 minutes on a mission here, while waiting for 30 minutes would earn you 48 gold nuggets. However, if you complete two 12 minute missions in 24 minutes, that's gonna yield you 64 gold nuggets. Even adding a brief three minute mission onto that, you'll accumulate 72 gold nuggets in the same time as it would take you to complete a 30 minute mission and make your 64 gold nuggets. So you're making a lot more by spending 12 minutes on a mission over time as opposed to waiting for the absolute maximum payout. But when it comes to the money-making side of the Bounty Hunter role, let's discuss a few things real fast. Standard free roam bounties pay the least money per mission, typically in the range of $25 to $40 for 12 minutes spent if the mission has one, two, or three dollar signs. Infamous bounties are three-part missions that were added with the prestigious Bounty Hunter license. Those pay out about $60 or so per 12-minute mission. And then legendaries, of course, still reign supreme for cash in this game, where you can earn up to $225 on some bounties. But remember, not all legendaries are created equal. The key distinction that separates the best and worst legendary bounties to complete is due to the different base pay among the differing tiers of legendary bounties. Base pay is basically just a guaranteed amount of money that you're gonna make on the mission, no matter how fast or slow you complete it. And and bounties are categorized into these three tiers. We have bottom tier bounties, mid tier legendaries, and top tier legendaries. Top tier legendary bounties are bounties such as Edda Doyle, Virgil Edwards, Tobin Winfield, Red Ben Clemson, and Carmela Montez, and these offer the highest base payouts of $150. So in total, expect to earn about $180 for 12 minutes spent on these legendaries, or $225 total if you wait out a full 30 minutes. Mid-tier bounties have a base payout of $125 and refer to bounties like Jean Bo Finley, Yukon Nick, Philip Carlier, the Owl Hoot family, and Sergio Vincenzo, which pay out $200 for 30 minutes spent on their missions. And then finally, we have the lowest paying bounties, which have a base pay of only $100. These are the bottom tier bounties, and they're for bounty targets like Barbarella Alcazar, Cecil C. Tucker, and the Wolfman, which all pay $175 for 30 minutes spent, for example. The key detail to note between all these tiers is spending 12 minutes on a top tier bounty will mean you are paid the same amount of money as you would be for spending 30 minutes on a bottom tier one. Play whichever legendary bounty you feel like playing, of course. I do a mix of all of them just to keep things fresh and have some variety for myself, but hopefully that allows you to make a better and more informed choice on which missions you're gonna be choosing, and that hopefully will potentially allow you to earn a significant amount of extra money over time, because of course, the base payouts increase $25 per tier as you move up those tiers. So just, it's important to keep that in mind. Now for number four, let's discuss the naturalist role. Funny enough, this role was incredibly disliked when it released, I wouldn't be exaggerating when I said most players hated this role when it launched, but truth be told, lots of players actually enjoy it now, and it may be one of the most helpful roles in the game, and I stand by that. It really buffed out the free roam gameplay loop, and it gives you some rewarding animals to hunt down when you're in between other big activities like resupplying your businesses or going on bounty hunts, for example. Remember that legendary animals chart that I talked about for the trader role earlier on in this video? Well, let's take another look at it, but this time let's focus on the pelt values for hunting legendary animals. The free roam legendaries are okay for your trader materials or for sampling and selling their pelts, etc. But the real money comes in with legendaries that you track down for Harriet. She wants you to sample them, which is basically the only way to get naturalist XP to rank up the roll fast. However, when it comes strictly to money making, killing those legendary animals and selling their pelts to Gus the Trapper will be your best bet. 
For fast and easy legendary animal hunts, try to consistently do missions like the Banded Gator, which pays out $32.50 per pelt sold to Gus the Trapper, the Awakta Panther, which pays out $34.50, the Akahi Boar, which pays $33, Milk Coyote at $30.50, and Ami Elk for $34.50, and the Peta Bison, which pays out $47, and then the Rutile Horn Ram, which pays out $44.50. Of course, the legendary Golden Spirit Bear is going to make you $50 when you sell that pelt, but of course, like I said before, it may not be worth it because the mission can just take too long and of course time is money in this game just like GTA and so you're probably better off doing other activities to make the $50 in that amount of time and probably make even more than that. So that's how you make money with the naturalist roll. Not much to it. Just focus on that legendary animals chart and do the shortest missions so that you can make some good money over time that way. And then of course we wind up at the collector roll coming in as the last roll we're going to be talking about here today. Saving the best for last year by far the easiest way of making money in Red Dead Online still to this day and to make it even easier check my description for a link to the gene Rocky collector map this map has everything you need it has all the collection sets their collectible spawn points which are updated in real time every single day you have the madame nazar location the location of herbs animal spawns fish spawns all the random encounters treasure map locations the list really just goes on and on it is your perfect red dead handbook and you shouldn't hit the trails without it but let's just focus on the collector role you still need to go out and collect these collectibles yourself. You can just use this interactive map to track where these collections are. The previous meta used to be to track down and collect all the coins as well as the lost jewelry sets. However, those sets as well as all diggable items in this game were randomized, meaning the spawn locations of a specific coin that you travel to didn't necessarily spawn the coin that the map said it would anymore. If you went to a specific location, the spawns are still the same. You can dig a coin out of the dirt. It's just not gonna be the 1800 gold coin, for example. It's gonna be a totally different coin because it's RNG and it's randomized. This happened back in summer of 2020 with the Naturalist update, basically as a way for Rockstar to nerf the interactive map as well as the roll itself, because as a roll went, it was just too easy and too quick to make money with and it threw off the balance of the game and the economy. The roll even after the nerf is still good, it's just not as good as it used to be. So the current best strategy and the one that's been the meta since 2020 has been to focus on collecting all non-diggable items, such as the four tarot card sets, family heirlooms, antique alcohol bottles, bird eggs, and wildflowers. Unless you have extra time to spare, it's best to completely avoid focusing on coins, jewelry, fossils, or arrowheads during a collector run unless you're very close to completing a set of them. Collecting non-diggable items will take on average about two hours, and if you're fast and lucky with the day cycle for each collection, you can do it in about one hour, 45 minutes, or at a very standard pace, like I said, about two hours. This is gonna give you thousands of dollars per day that you do this, and you're gonna be good to go. So with all that said, those were some of my best tips strategies and secrets to maximize money making with each role in Red Dead Online. Honestly, there's really no wrong answer when it comes to how to make money with these roles. There's effective methods, there's efficient methods, and then there's the ultimate methods which we discussed today. But all of my tips and tricks discussed in this video is how I make my money with each role, and I encourage you to at least try these out and see how they work for you. That's where we're going to wrap up today's video. I would love to get your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below regarding all of these money-making methods, if you tried them out, which ones you like the most, etc. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video today, and if you did, hopefully I earned your like on it. And of course, if you are new to my channel and you want to stay up to date with the best Red Dead Online and Rockstar Games content, then please consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single thing we post here on the channel. We consistently talk about updates, news, information, tips, tricks, and even leaks, and we'll keep you guys updated here on the channel daily. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube. And you're more than welcome to ask me any questions on those platforms. You can follow me at HazardousHDTV, and all of my social media links can be found in the description down below. With all that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys in the next Red Dead Online video. Adios, amigos.